endless variety when it comes to car trailer design. Uh, that's shown whenever a guy's car trailer gets pinched, he says, it's unique, and they always are. Most car trailers have an edge frame to keep the car in place. Some don't and are just dead flat. Others are tilt. And you can make car trailers from caravans. I've made two of those. To make a car trailer from a caravan, you've obviously got to get the right one at the right place. The advantage is you get heaps of parts. You get all your axles, electric brakes usually, your tow couplings and so forth. And uh, sometimes even your lights. But uh, you need to get underneath to check that the chassis rails are in the right spot before you, uh, you select a caravan. If you go that route, or if you've got a car trailer that you want to adapt uh, and make uh, more refined to your purposes, don't be afraid to alter the chassis. And one of the things I want to do is I want to drop the tail of this trailer down. There's more than a few good reasons for doing this. The first is the obvious one, that it makes the trailer much easier to load because instead of the back of the floor being up here, it's down there, so your angle of loading is, is lower, which means it's easier if the car's broken down, you've got to push it or winch it on, and uh, if you've got air dams and things like that, it's easy to load the car because you haven't got steep angles. It's just an all-round win-win for loading. An even more important advantage in fitting what the Yanks call a beaver tail or drop tail to your trailer is that it lowers the centre of gravity the back of your trailer where the car normally on a flatbed trailer tends to sit the highest so by lowering the back of the car down you bring bring much greater stability to your towing because the car won't tend to fishtail as much as it will with the weight well, that much higher up when I bought it this was a heavy industrial box trailer used for hauling earth moving equipment and it had a flat floor in it so I've done this before, I've dropped the tail and I can tell you there's only one tiny disadvantage. Because the bottom of your trailer is lower, it can tend to catch when going through the dips of driveways and so forth. But the easy way to combat this is to fit a couple of wheels like I've done here. And so when I'm going into a driveway situation and going backwards, that'll just take the weight. I've got one on the other side as well. Problem solved. How do you know how much to drop the tail of your car trailer? Well, you get the tow ball so that it's sitting at the lowest height that it's going to be at when it's on your tow vehicle. This has got to come down a bit. Okay, so that's now at the height that it rides at on my car. At the front of this trailer, the floor is 500 mil, or half a metre off the ground. Here, I've come down to 400. Now, only dropping at 100 mil doesn't sound much, but trust me, it makes a huge difference for loading and unloading your vehicle. So to work out how much I can drop the tail of this car camper trailer that I'm making, I get my ball joint so it's sitting at the right height it will be on the car, which is 450 mil off the ground. Now I can go to the back and figure out how much I can drop it. So at the moment, the caravan chassis is 510 millimetres off the ground, which means I can drop this tail 110 millimetres. The final question is, how far from the tail of the trailer should I cut it to drop it? Where should I take the wedge out? Well, obviously you don't want it right at the back, otherwise you end up with a stubby little angle and that's not much help. So I want to make this as long as I can put the cut as far from the back as I can so the slope is as gradual as I can make it. When I add the 25mm square tube framing on the outside to strengthen this because this is too weak, uh, I'm going to have a post about here. So that gives me a point at which to build to so that the 25mm square tube will reinforce this box trailer member after I've cut it and welded it. So that's where I'm going to, to do my cut. I'm going to do my cut there. Put your floor jack under the end of the trailer and just support the weight of the tail of the trailer so that as you're cutting it, the tail won't drop and jam your blade on your angle grinder. 
Now we come to the bit where you need to be precise. How big a wedge do you cut out of the bottom of your main beam to get the angle of the drop of the floor right? Obviously you don't want to cut too much. Just bolt a straight edge, in my case I've used timber, uh, so that it's level with the top of the floor at the point where you're going to make the cut. And then if you come back to the tail of the trailer, you can see that I've got it so that that piece of timber is exactly, the top of it is exactly 400 mil off the ground which is the height that I want to cut it. That gives you the angle of the drop floor, not the angle for the wedge cut here. So what you do is you come back to your cutting point and using a set square you mark your beam on the slope and then you mark it where it's level and that'll give you your wedge. In my case that gap is going to be about 5 mil. The moment of truth. Well, I've got the wedge right with the jack out. That is sitting at exactly 400mm off the ground.